Vienna, the capital of Austria, a city world-renowned for its art and culture, a metropolis noted for having one of the highest qualities of life in the world. The city's almost two million inhabitants have access to a luxury which is often taken for granted, pure mountain spring water, which flows from every single tap in the city. Vienna's water tanks are fed by two pipelines from the Alps, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Every day, 130 liters of water are consumed by every resident, regardless of their age or size. Only a fraction of this, about three liters, is used for cooking or drinking. The majority is needed for personal hygiene and flushing toilets. Inevitably, top quality drinking water becomes wastewater. Vienna's sewer system collects vast quantities of residential, commercial and industrial wastewater as well as all rainwater. All that ends up in an intricate system of small and large sewers hidden from public view. This 2,500 kilometer network of sewers has but one destination, Vienna's wastewater treatment plant in Simmering. Every second, 6,000 liters of wastewater enter the plant, which is operated by EBS Wien, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. The entire highly sophisticated cleaning process that follows takes 20 hours. Let's look at how the plant works. Firstly, wastewater passes through four stages of mechanical cleaning. Stage one is the grit chamber, Coarse solids such as stone settle in a trough at the bottom of the sewer bed. EBS V disposes of 1.5 tons of sedimented grit every day. This part of the process is very important as it prevents damage to the downstream plant components. Next, the wastewater enters a special elevator. Six immense screw pumps lift the water five meters. Up to 18,000 liters per second can be transported by these steel giants. Lifted to this higher level, wastewater can flow through the remaining mechanical cleaning section by means of the natural gradient. The two-stage screening system traps food scraps, cotton buds, tampons, and cigarette buds, all things that don't belong in the wastewater. Six coarse and six fine screens filter everything larger than three millimeters, which amounts to nearly 20 tons of solids per day. A sand trap is located in between the coarse and fine screens where the flow of wastewater is decelerated. This allows grains of sand and other small particles to settle to the bottom. Scrapers remove these solids from the bottom roughly three tons every day. Stage four is the primary sedimentation, the final step of mechanical cleaning. Here, time seems to stop as everything goes in slow motion. The velocity of the current is decreased so that even the tiniest particles are able to sediment. This so-called primary sludge Roughly 150 tons of solids per day is removed by scraper beams. When the mechanical cleaning is finished, two biological cleaning stages eliminate organic pollutants and nutrients from the wastewater. Carbon compounds, nitrogen and phosphorus must be removed from the wastewater to ensure that the Danube's high water quality is not impaired. The plant's biological purification is modeled on nature. Like streams and rivers, the wastewater treatment plant's aeration tanks are filled with countless microorganisms that cause the pollutants to decompose. However, inside these gigantic basins, everything happens on a bigger scale, much faster, more intense, and highly concentrated. This process requires some external support. We humans and microorganisms have something in common. We need oxygen to stay alive. To supply the microorganisms with vast amounts of oxygen, ambient air is absorbed and densified in high-performance compressors. 
It is then streamed through huge pipes to the bottom of aeration tanks, where 80,000 disc diffusers distribute the air through fine poured membranes, creating myriads of tiny bubbles. The infused oxygen boosts the microorganism's metabolism, their favorite food being tiny particles of dirt. This insatiably hungry cleaning squad consists of bell, trumpet, slipper animalcules, and many other microscopic creatures. Trillions of these tiny organisms populate the clarifiers, breaking down carbon and nitrogen in both biological cleaning stages. Phosphorus is eliminated through a precipitant. Let's take a closer look at the biological cleaning stages. First of all, propeller pumps lift the mechanically treated wastewater into the aeration tanks. This first biological cleaning stage uses both oxygen-enriched aerated zones and non-aerated zones. Thus, the perfect breeding ground for the microorganisms that devour carbon for their energy production is created. Inside the massive intermediate clarification tanks, the flow is intentionally slowed down. The wastewater almost comes to a standstill, allowing the activated sludge, the well-fed microorganisms, to slowly settle to the bottom. Most of the sludge is pumped back into the aeration tanks. Then the even hungrier microorganisms rejoin the cleaning process. The surplus, approximately 100 tons of excess sludge, is removed from the cycle and then used to generate eco-energy. The pre-treated wastewater inside the intermediate clarifiers is skimmed from the surface and drained off over indented sills. It is now prepared for the next step of the treatment. The second biological cleaning stage specializes in the degradation of nitrogen. Here too, zones with and without a supply of oxygen alternate in the aeration tanks. This provides the perfect environment for microorganisms, converting urea and ammonium through several steps into harmless gaseous nitrogen, the main component of the air that we breathe. From here, water flows directly into the secondary sedimentation tanks, the final step in the purification process. Each of these 15 tanks is so massive in size that the reason rad, Vienna's giant ferris wheel, could fit inside. One more time, the cleaned wastewater gets separated from activated sludge. Microorganisms settle to the bottom, where once again scrapers clear them into collection pits. Activated sludge rejoins the cleaning process. Each secondary sedimentation tank holds 13 million liters. This purified wastewater is so clean, it appears almost black it's an optical phenomenon, as the water contains no more suspended solids. Therefore, sunlight doesn't refract. The ultimate proof of the excellence of the cleaning process. Having been optimally purified through 20 hours of treatment, the wastewater then flows through submerged pipes directly into the outlet channel. On its way, the wastewater passes a final checkpoint, where it is examined and analyzed for quality before it gets released into the Danube Canal and the River Danube itself. EBS Veen staff are on duty around the clock to monitor the cleaning performance of the wastewater treatment plant. To do this, they are assisted by advanced control technology. Thousands of probes, pumps and drives continuously send their in-situ data 20,000 signals per hour are transmitted to the control room, the brain of the wastewater treatment plant. From here, on-site personnel can intervene in the cleaning process at any time. Thanks to this cutting-edge technology and the technical expertise of the team at EBS Veen, up to 99% of carbon compounds are eliminated from the wastewater that Vienna produces. The River Danube is spared 
some 125 tons of pollutants every day. This sophisticated level of wastewater treatment requires enormous amounts of energy. The plant consumes more than 60 gigawatt hours of electricity per year, the same amount as 25,000 Viennese households. Most of this electricity is needed to supply the microorganisms with oxygen. As an environmental service provider, EBS Wien actively pursues every opportunity to generate electricity and heat from renewable energy sources. Our main focus is on the residual product of wastewater treatment, sewage sludge. This sludge contains a lot of renewable energy, which we use optimally in our eco power plant. Sewage sludge from the primary and intermediate clarifiers still contains a lot of water. The total solids content is less than 1%. To increase this percentage, the sludge needs to be thickened. This requires two steps. Firstly, gravity causes solids to settle at the bottom of the sludge thickness, reducing the volume of the sludge to a quarter of its size. The solids content rises to 4%. In the next step, powerful centrifuges, which function like the spin cycle of a washing machine, increase the solids content of the sludge to approximately 8%. The sludge must not be allowed to get any thicker than this, as it needs to be able to be transported. A myriad of pumps keeps everything moving. Heated to 38 degrees Celsius, the vicious mass is fed into six massive digesters, which form a closed hydraulic system. New, thickened sludge is continuously added, while digested sludge is simultaneously removed. This sludge remains inside the digesters for 25 days on average, deprived of any oxygen. During this time, microorganisms break down the organic components. The result is sewer gas, of which around 60% is precious, energy-rich methane. This gas rises inside the digesters. From here, pipes carry it to two tanks, where it is temporarily stored. Auxiliary fans ensure that the outer membrane of the tanks always keeps its shape, while the inner membrane adapts to the gas volume. The sewer gas is then cleaned by activated carbon filters and is then ready to be fed to the cogeneration units. These huge engines use gas as their fuel and generators convert the movement of the cylinders into electrical energy. The waste heat from the engines is used to sustainably heat and cool our on-site buildings, but above all, it is used to heat the sewage sludge. Much of the electricity produced is used by Vienna's wastewater treatment plant itself. All surpluses of eco-heat and eco-electricity are fed into the city grids. By generating more green energy than it consumes for wastewater treatment, our plant is a true eco-power plant. The service we provide is a vital contribution to the effort of the city of Vienna to achieve its ambitious goal of carbon neutrality by 2040. Vienna's wastewater treatment plan produces both clean wastewater and clean energy, protecting our environment and preserving our climate in challenging times.